Hi everyone. In today's video, I will explain how to prepare a successful research proposal for qualitative research. This is going to be part one of the two part series of videos. The reason being that I don't want the video to be too long and boring for you guys because my students do complain that sometimes videos become too long and boring. So in today's video, I will take up the first seven points that will help you prepare a successful research proposal. And then in the next video, I will follow it up with the remaining six points. Welcome to Search Research with Dr. Sam, your online thesis guide and advisor. And I hope you enjoy today's video. Before I start with the first seven key points that will help you prepare your research proposal, I want you to understand the three assumptions that I have made for the purpose of this video. First, I have assumed that your proposal will not be subject to review by someone who does not accept qualitative research as a genuine scholarship. Because that, when that is the case, the proposal must undertake to defend the legitimacy of a paradigm. A task, I think, is better reserved for experienced academics. On the other hand, reviewers who simply are unfamiliar with qualitative research usually can be dealt with by patient explanation and providing a judiciously short selection of introductory readings. The second assumption I have made is that at least one of the reviewers will be familiar with the design and the methods that you propose, as well as the literature that explains the choices you have made. Without the support of such an expertise, the burden of explaining, certifying and persuading becomes more daunting by a document of a few pages because the research proposal cannot be too long. It is normally for a few pages only. The third assumption that I have made is that the reviewers for your proposal will be looking for answers to a familiar set of questions. For example, do you appear to know the conceptual and methodological turf? Does your plan reflect careful thought? Do the parts of the proposal fit together? Is there evidence that you are fully aware of the problems to be overcome? Is the nature and scope of the study reasonably well matched to your skills and resources? So if you agree with these three assumptions, and that is what the case is with your research proposal, then please go ahead and listen to the first seven key points that will make your research proposal a success with your reviewers. The first important key thing that you must clear up in your proposal is that why are you going with a qualitative design? Make absolutely clear that a qualitative design is appropriate to both the study's general purpose, why you are doing the study, and the more specific research goals, such as your formally stated research questions. Your training and personal values are not irrelevant to this argument. In the end, however, it is the match between the paradigm that you choose and the problem that must carry the day. Be flexible. Present a plan describing what you will do from the outset to the finish of your study. If you are a new budding researcher, Stick closely to the general specifications of the plan. Qualitative research frequently involves some circumstances for which a degree of flexibility is wise. Some procedures must be responsive to what actually happens during data collection, as well as to the nature of the data that begin to accumulate. If there are such points within your proposed plan, showing that you have anticipated the necessity of selecting alternative course of action is reassuring to the reviewers. There is a delicate balance to be maintained in this aspect of a proposal for qualitative research. Present a careful plan and stick to it unless there are compelling reasons not to do so. For example, if the proposed study or the proposed method that you have chosen is only for experienced research scientists, make sure you give clear indication that you have given careful thought to the alternatives if they are required during the course of research. Build a framework. Present a conceptual framework that helps to explain and clarify your proposed design. Not an easy task to do, but I'm sure you will figure it out together with the help of your research guide and advisors. Define the main constructs of your research. Show their relationship to one another and to your research question, to your methodology, to your literature review. 
make sure that it does not take the form of a extended general review of literature do not make it very long and boring because the readers and the examiners they will lose interest make it interesting keep it short and the more you quote previous references previous journals conference papers the better it gets in justifying your points or your arguments the literature will provide construct definitions theoretical frameworks example of such successful research strategies used in similar and parallel circumstances and a display of where your study would fit into the ongoing conversation among scholars the primary emphasis however should be on the concepts and the relationship assembly for your own study make sure that you take the special care at each step to write brief but explicit explanations of how your research parts fit together the goal of the research with the research question the research question with the framework that you propose the framework with the methodology and the collected data with means of analysis in the absence of the structure provided by standardized designs it may be easy for the author of qualitative proposals to lose the sense of cohesiveness among several parts they should all be able to fit together it may not be perfect but try to make them fit together to convince your examiners that you do have a plan in place deal directly with the issue of validity this is going to be quite important for your research if you complete the proposed study everyone who reads the report will have a perfect right to ask why should they believe you if you want to be prepared with a persuasive answer the proposal is the place to search out the threats to validity inherent in your plans at least think about how you could go wrong this may be a tough question to answer at the beginning stages of your research but the more you talk to fellow academics they might give you some ideas think about how will you ensure that the description of your participants and context are accurate and complete are your personal biases a threat if not why not or if so what do you plan to do about it in what ways and to what degree will the research participants reaction stop you from acquiring the required data and not threat the inherent validity of the research be sure to discuss your plans for analysis giving practical examples wherever possible the more examples you use and simple to use examples the better it is for your proposal the better it looks for your understanding qualitative research seems to invite accounts of proposed analysis that are superficial often in the form of brief sections devoted to wholly theoretical discussion that is not convincing as a demonstration of competence but if you are planning to use the triangulation of data that is using different methods to show that you are pretty much getting the same findings or contradicting your findings show readers that you know how to perform the appropriate steps of logic with reasonable facility i think i will stop the video here and i will discuss the rest of the seven parts or the seven points in my next video let's keep it short so that you guys don't get bored see you soon with part 2